What's up everyone? My name is Soren Iverson. I'm a product designer at Cash App and today I'm going to show you how to design a backdrop component as shown in Google's material design guidelines. At the end of this video, you'll have an interactive prototype where you can collapse and expand a backdrop and navigate between rooms in a furniture application. First thing I'm going to do is create a new frame. Let's make this 375 by 812. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to go to my assets and I'm going to go to this top app bar. Here I'm going to drag in the Android component that's fixed at the top of most pages just as a placeholder. Then I'm also going to add my top bar. If you want to learn how to create the components that are listed in this sidebar, there's a playlist on my channel that'll show you how. Now I'm going to remove two of these. I'm going to change this to say bars filter. Then I'm going to keep this the same. And then I'm going to change the page title to living room. I'm actually going to make my background color all this color. I'm going to detach this instance and then I am going to remove these two components here. I'm going to take this text that says living room and I'm going to change it to be 14 pixels, 20 pixels high, 0% here. Put this in an auto layout container, 40 pixels high. Let's give it a fill but have that fill be 20% opacity and then we're going to put this 16 pixels from the side and I'm going to change the width of this to be 43 and then I'm going to give it 16 pixels of horizontal padding and then then I'm going to set this pixel rounding to six, and then I'm going to duplicate this, and I'm going to apply auto layout. And then the first thing I'm going to do is make sure this is aligned with the top bar, and then I'm going to remove this fill, and then I'm going to duplicate this a few more times. For this video, I'm going to pull in the furniture categories from West Elm. And now that I have that, I'm going to take this, call it living room, and I'm going to duplicate this, and I'm going to call this shopping. I'm going to change this from bars to say close, so it'll be an X icon. And this is the page that you'll see when you actually have a room selected. All of this information here will still exist for animation sake, but it's not going to be visible with the top layer that I'm about to create. Call this living room shopping, and then I'm going to duplicate this, call this bedroom. Let's add that fill back in. We'll remove it here, and then I'm going to duplicate this one more time, and I'm going to call this bedroom shopping. We'll also call this bedroom, add that fill here, and remove this fill. So now we have our bottom layers all set. Once I have those, I'm going to go ahead and create this top layer. Let's create a new frame. I'm going to to have this be 84 pixels from the bottom so it is eight pixels away from this top bar that I have I'm going to have this take the full height and then I'm going to add some rounding at the top let's say 20 pixels I'm going to go to a plugin called smooth shadow and then I'm going to have a little bit of a drop shadow and I'll click apply you can see more easily here that you've got that shadow coming up a little bit now that I have this I am going to add that subheader let's take one of these rows that we have in our back layer copy that, paste it here. I'm gonna change this fill to white and then I'm gonna change this text to be black. And let's have this say 112 items. I'm going to align this to the top of this top layer and let's change that to be 16 pixels from the left side and we'll have this be 20 pixels from the top, 16 pixels from the bottom. Then I'm gonna add a stroke, but it'll be on the bottom only. And then we'll change this to be a lighter gray like that. Now that we have this top layer, let's actually add the content that's gonna live in here. I am going to first of all, create a frame and that frame is going to have a light gray fill this and we're going to make this a square image that is 164 pixels by 164 pixels like this 16 pixels from the side and here I'll start pulling in the information for each of the items in that category apply auto layout so that these two things are grouped and then they're grouped as a row and then I'm going to duplicate this put it below add let's say 20 pixels of spacing and then duplicate this a few more times let's add a six pixel border radius to all these images and once I've added all the content in there, I'm going to put this in a frame, have it align with the bottom of this page. And then I'm going to go to prototype, overflow scrolling, and I'm going to go to vertical scrolling. This way later, when I'm scrolling through this area, it won't overflow into the top part of this page. Now I'm going to take this frame that I created here. I'm going to add that here. And then I'm going to go to design. And then I'm going to move it down so that it aligns with the list of options. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for bedroom. And once I've swapped out the images, I'll also swap out the titles. I'll take this and I'll add it to the same part of the shopping page. So let's change this to 580. And that is all you actually need for the design part of this. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start hooking up the prototype. First, I'll take this menu icon and I'll say on click, navigate to this page. Normally it would say instant. So I'm going to say smart animate. I'm going to set this to gentle. And then I'm going to have this bedroom component here on click. It'll navigate to, and we'll use that same gentle smart animation for. I'm also going to take this X, and if you close that, it'll go back to this page. And then this page would go back here. And then if I click living room, 
that would take me back to this living room page. One other thing you gotta do is make sure that this top bar is the topmost layer within this frame. Otherwise, when you vertically scroll, it'll overlap. So let's make sure we have that set on all of these. Now, if I go to my prototype, I can scroll here vertically. And then if I click on this hamburger menu, I can go to the bedroom navigational area. And you'll notice when we're going between pages that there's a little bit of purple that pops up there. The reason that it's doing that is because this gentle animation overcompensates a little bit. So when this pops back up, it'll go up a little bit farther than its final place where it sits. To fix this, we'll take all of these and we're gonna just increase the height a little bit. So that'll give us a little bit more white space to work with to make sure that it doesn't pop up too far and show that back purple area. So now I hit R to refresh the prototype. And you can see when I'm going between pages now, you don't have that problem anymore. That's it. You now have a interaction for the backdrop design that's shown in Google's material design guidelines. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you now have a better understanding of backdrop components and you feel comfortable for using them when you're putting together your next mobile app design. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Soren, and I'll see you in the next video.